you can write on your iPhone. I think that's amazing. I mean, it's a phone, but I mean, seriously write as well. You can write in pages or Microsoft Word, Final Draft on your iPhone. And when you do that, when you write a novel in Word, say, or you edit a few paragraphs in pages, maybe add a scene in Final Draft, well, that writing on your iPhone is already on your Mac. It's immediately on your Mac and on your iPad too, if you have one. I mean, you can and, and have not very seriously, but I have begun writing a sentence on the iPhone while waiting for the kettle, then finished that sentence on the iPad while I was drinking the tea. And then when I got back to the Mac, read it again, it was absolutely a rubbish sentence, just deleted it all. So iPhone, iPad, Mac, the same thing. That's fantastic. Only iPhones, they're a bit small and the keyboard, it's a bit smaller, but it's not as if Apple hasn't noticed that. And it also, it isn't as if Apple hasn't also just had a little bit of extra fun with it. Let me show you, please, 10 things that are going to make writing on your iPhone faster and, e well, call it eight things, right? Eight things that will definitely do the faster and easier thing. But I also, nine and 10, we wanted, I just want to start and end. Let's do it that way with a couple of iPhone things that they won't speed up your writing, but you are definitely going to enjoy them. They're actually magical. And one of those magical TM, you're going to relish this. If, if, I mean, if you don't know them already, you'll love them. Uh, if you do know them already, well, then you've probably all gone and rushed to show them to Android users before now. Hello, I'm William Gallagher and this is 58 Keys, which is ever, as always, it's for writers like you and me who use and who write on Macs and iPads and iPhones. Do subscribe because, well, I mean, there's always so much to talk about. Um, and plus, actually, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of good things about this bell icon that you can click on to be notified of new... Um, but let's get on with this writing. Ten things to help you write usefully on your iPhone. Yeah, yeah. Eight things to help you with writing. Two you're just enjoying. If actually, why not? Let's start with one of those. Here is the first thing, which I think is magical. I mean, this is amazing, but please watch carefully because it took me ages to understand how to get this to work. And actually, even now, even though I can do it and done it and you'll see, I'm not at the stage yet where I can just casually demonstrate it to anyone. Frank, I just, I don't want to tell you how many goes it took me to get this to work so that I could just show it to you once, but you've got to see this. Here goes. Please observe. I have my iPhone, nothing up the sleeve, iPhone next to the iPad. I pinch on this photo on the iPad and I drop it onto the iPhone. If you don't think that's wow, well then you probably because you do it all the time in which case you can tell me why am I finding it so difficult isn't there's no trick here by the way I mean not no trick in the sense that you have to buy anything or, or set up anything or, or even that I just skip somehow skip some steps along the way pinch on a photograph with three fingers and that is key it's a three that's four three finger pinch not the usual two then immediately go to the other device and again with three fingers pinch out uh, your two devices, they, they must be your two devices. So your Apple ID on both logged in. Uh, the two have to be on the same Wi-Fi network. They both have to have Bluetooth switched on. And also I think called handoff. This is getting a bit detailed and it almost certainly is already set up, but handoff is important. Go to settings, general, airplay and handoff. Make sure that airplay is turned on. I mean, seriously, it probably already is. But if anything, if this doesn't work for you either, this is something to try. Uh, two more things, by the way, not to just destroy the magic of all this. Uh, I found uh, it was going wrong for me most often unless I first zoomed in a bit to the photo that I wanted to copy and drop. If I didn't, well, then my three finger pinch just closed the photo. And sometimes that still copied it, but not even remotely as consistently. And there was also actually, I, I don't know why, there was this frustrating thing where I could pinch to copy on one device and then the other would say, you know, no, you haven't done anything, nothing to paste here, nothing, move along. But I'd get to my Mac and I could paste it and the picture would be there. It's, I don't know why. I Certainly I should do this. Maybe we should both practice a bit more before we try showing it off to people. 
But isn't it wow, though? I mean, that's genuinely magical stuff. Devices, amazing. And now, time to be just a bit more serious. Since iOS 13, which would have been 2019, you have been able to type by swiping around the keyboard. Instead of tap, 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 you can swipe like this. Apple calls it quick path, except when it calls it slide to type. I think of it as swipe to type, but frankly, only because that rhymes, doesn't it? What's happening, actually, just as you see this working, what's happening is actually really similar to the, the thing that normally happens on iPhones when you tap on keys. The keys on the iPhone, they're all small, but the iPhone is smart. I mean, this is so clever. You tap the letter E, for example, there's a really strong chance that the next letter you want to type will be an A. So even though the A key looks like it stays the same size, it doesn't. Apple expands the, the touch area around the A. So the you're tapping even quite close to A gets you that letter. And with this swiping for typing thing, it's like a campaign, doesn't it? it, it the iPhone is really doing a similar thing. It's figuring out which is the most likely, which is the most likely word you are trying to do, and then it pops that in. Um, I find you do, it's best if you lift your finger between words, which does slow you down, because if you run it on, well, it might figure out the two words, but it might not. Another consequence of the iPhone keyboard being small is that you can't just go straight to a number. There isn't a row of number keys the way there is on a full-size Mac keyboard. You have to press this number key, then tap the digit you want, then tap the alphabet key, whatever it's called, to go back to regular typing. Except if it's a digit that you want, I mean just one single digit from zero to nine, well then you can do this. Hold the number key down, don't press it, hold it down, slide to the digit you want, let go. That number is then typed for you into your text and the keyboard springs straight back to QWERTY. Great for a single digit. Rubbish for a phone number, but great for a single digit. I said that when I got back to the Mac, I had this rubbish sentence that no human being should ever read and I wanted to get rid of it. Well, you know, you can delete and things, but there's also undo on the iPhone anyway. Um, with any iPhone doing anything, you should be able to just, you know, shake it. And it would usually undo the last thing you did. Sometimes though, nothing happens though. And always you look a bit crazy doing it in public. Mind you, on the other hand, it can, it's as close to exercise as I get. And, and potentially it's also a stress reliever. Been with your family, shake to one and revealing too much but we're in a, we're writers we're in a hurry uh, rather than shaking that might or might not work we look at this we've just written this rubbish word right let's say it's a word a rubbish word on our iphones and we want to just get rid of it we want to undo it swipe left with three fingers anywhere on the screen except over the keyboard and it's done or, or rather it's undone for you um let me be clear that is specifically undo though that's not delete same thing in this case, but uh, say it's a rubbish paragraph you've written, then you're going to get really weary of under swipe, under swipe. So, I mean, uh, you've seen this, you've come across this, even if only by accident, you can tap on a word right, and then drag these drag handles, as they're called, to select an entire paragraph or more, and then just tap the delete key. But you can also do this. You can double tap on a word to select it or you can triple tap on that word to select the whole paragraph that it's in. I understand you're supposed to be able to tap something that will select the whole sentence. So word, yes, paragraph, yes, but also sentence. And I've never been able to figure that one out. And I, I don't know why. Fortunately though, I write rubbish in volume. So it's usually whole paragraphs and chapters. Number five, that, that swipe to undo thing. It does nicely when the rubbish word is, is the word you've just written. But I'm not sure what the odds of that are, because, I mean, you write a lot of words when you get around to writing. You could change your mind about any of them. So you know that uh, you can scroll around your iPhone text and then just tap into a paragraph that you want to change. 
but you'd have found already that that's not very precise and also because like with that tap to select things it's really easy to inadvertently select the whole paragraph instead of just you know plonking the cursor down at exactly the point you want in a word so do this instead scroll your document to where you can see the the word or the phrase whatever it is that you want to change then press and hold on the space bar that turns the whole keyboard into a trackpad on your iPhone and now as you move your cursor move your finger around you move the cursor and can position it precisely where you want just move it and then let it go when it's there I keep saying that the iPhone keyboard is small because it is but you can make it smaller though and you might actually want to particularly if you have a, you know, a larger iPhone. So uh, out of the new phones that are out, if you're using the iPhone 14 Pro Max or the iPhone 14 Plus, actually this works with any phone, but with the bigger size thing, you can resize it to make it easier to use, more easily one-handed. Um, there is a small caveat to this, but most of the time, all you do is you press and hold on this globe icon it's a globe because it's meant to be for changing between different keyboard language keyboards from around the globe around the world press and hold on it and then if you see these three keyboard icons we'll pick the left or the right one and you see what happens uh, to go back later to the full size one you do the same press and hold on the globe then you tap on the middle keyboard icon there there you are, back. So there was a caveat. Then there might be two. If you do not happen to have more than one language keyboard set up on your phone, it's possible, I think, that you may not see the globe icon at all. I think you do. I can't seem to prove it, but you might not do it. Uh, but actually, uh, what are the odds? Since Apple forced an emoji keyboard on us, you probably do uh, have at least two keyboards option, two keyboard options set up. And if you don't, and if this kind of thing is worth your installing a whole other language keyboard, well, go to settings, general, keyboard, and then at the top there, tap keyboards. Are you taking notes with this? And then lastly, add new keyboard. Um, I've got a text expander one in there as well. You can get apps that do functions this way. Uh, the other caveat though, it, you call it a semi caveat i think i think this keyboard is only available right now for your main home language or you see i keep seeing it in english but not under french so i find though if i go through this and i select french i make that my home, main language and then i come out and i go back in through it again then usually this keyboard appears and if it doesn't you can always go to settings general keyboard one-handed keyboard and tap left or right this is totally irrelevant but just looking at these reminds me i love uh, the french keyboard you know in english you, you refer to the keyboard as a qwerty layout after the there's on top row and I'm sure you come across this in french it's a uh, i swear if i had a daughter i'd be so tempted to name her a could be why i don't have children what would you call a boy again with the small keyboard okay you just can't get all of the keys on the keyboard that you would want not in this size except you can kind of a bit sort of take this for one example i'm in the uk so if i tap the number key on my iphone then amongst you know, as well as digits and other things i get a pound sterling symbol if i press and hold on that pound then i get all of these other currencies that are worth so much more than the pound at the moment all right there very many iphone keys have these extra options i mean look at this when you're right when you press and hold on the letter e for instance isn't that gorgeous you get all of the accented versions of e and they're just a swipe or a slide or a tap away and and i like this one a lot uh press and hold on the question mark they're just the regular question mark and you get the option of this it's an upside down question mark as, as used in spanish i put that in my calendar before events that aren't confirmed and i think the upside down question mark it just maybe just for me it jumps out of the screen far more than you know tbc or something
all this has been about you typing this. Let your iPhone, let your iPhone do some work. Let your iPhone do some typing for you a bit. You can have it so that your iPhone automatically types out particular phrases or, or maybe things that you must get right, like uh, phone numbers, uh, the spelling of people's names, something like that. And you can do that through text replacement. I actually, I have an entire 58 Keys episode about this because there's a lot more to it if you want there to be. But right out of the box, and specifically on an iPhone, you can just simply set up a short phrase called a trigger and the iPhone will spot it when you type that little thing and then replace it with whatever you decide. Or, or also actually whatever Apple has decided. Just so you see this working, in any iPhone app that you can type in at all, anything that will let you type letters in, type the letters O, M, W, and then tap the space bar. On my way, exclamation mark. Exclamation marks are like you, emoticons on typewriters. I don't know, load them. Apple sets that one up as an example on every iPhone, also every iPad, every Mac. They must love it. Go to settings, please. Settings, general, keyboard, keyboards. Seriously, you must make notes about this. And then finally, yes, text replacement. Um, you'll see a few already set up, including IMW and a few more that I have added. Uh, well, in this example, you don't have mine, but tap the plus icon to make your own. Top icon, uh, plus icon at the top right. Then choose what it is you would like your iPhone to automatically type out in full for you. Then tap in shortcut and type the short phrase or a few letters that you want to trigger that larger thing. And please be careful. For a long time, I don't know why I did this, I had XL be replaced by look into this, which was a thing um, I used in, in research tasks in my to-do app. Look into this topic, this client, whatever. Um, but it actually made shopping for clothes. Large X, I, I, I've had to diet. Yeah. Any trigger, by the way, that you set up on your iPhone right here, it is immediately also set up on your, on your Mac, on your iPad, and vice versa. I should say that. Ninth, and also last of the serious ones before we end on more magic. There's an art to the building up of suspense. Say you've written a word and you're not sure what it means, or, or maybe more like, because you, I mean, you chose the word, you know what, it, you're not convinced you spelt it right, okay? Double tap on that word and you get this bar of options appearing. What options go in that bar does vary. It changes depending on um, what app you're in and whether you've tapped on a word or maybe an image, you get different things. All sorts of things can go on like that, but it will always include somewhere an option called look up. You may very well have to tap on this end arrow once or twice to get to look up, but when you do, you get a dictionary definition of the word. That is, you get a dictionary definition if it's a real word and if it's in the dictionary, and if you've spelt it correctly. If it isn't or you haven't or you can't, then you get, uh, it says no content found. And really, that's just saying, never heard of it. You've probably spelt it wrong. Right, number 10. So we've been waiting for this. This is another iPhone thing that it's not going to speed up your writing, okay? Don't let me pretend that it is, but you will enjoy it, especially if you follow Harry Potter. Loomis. Oh, and to turn it off, Knox. Yeah, that one doesn't always work on me. Okay. Oh, it did, it went off there. Um, Loomis and Knox, they're in your iPhone now, they turn the torch on or off. There's also supposed to be Accio, the spell for bringing things to you in Hogwarts, whatever. Uh, it's supposed to be, you should say, Accio Omnifocus, and the iPhone will open the Omnifocus to do up. I cannot get that to work, and I don't know why. Um, but since I've learned about Loomis, I'm afraid I've used it a lot. I do use the torch quite a bit for various things and normally you turn it on uh, from the lock screen by uh, pressing and holding on the torch icon or whatever you're doing on the iPhone, you can swipe down to get, you know, control center and there tap on the torch icon or the flashlight if you prefer. Um, being able to just say Loomis is much quicker and a bit of fun, except 
Well, look, it's not as if I cheated here, right? This is in your phone, but I did take a few extra steps to make it look better. Uh, I say it's in your phone. This is actually Siri. It's all a feature in Siri. So in theory, actually, you are supposed to be able to say, hey, hey, Iris, or similar. Hey, Iris, Lumos. Yeah, it would work, but Harry Potter never called on Alexa to make a spell, so I think that just ruins the effect. But fortunately, to get Siri without Hey Whatever, you can press a button. It's meant to be, uh, press a button when you have multiple Apple devices and they could all react to the Hey Iris thing. Press and hold the button on, on the device that you want to react and you can say the command without Hey Anybody, uh, as useful as Hey Anybody usually is. Um, as I should say, this is a Face ID phone. On a Face ID phone, you press and hold the side button. On an iPhone SE or any other with a home button, you press and hold on that home button and then just say Lumus. It's excellent. Except, sorry, there's just one more bit. I'm spoiling this and it seemed so good for some reason. And who knows why? Siri can't let this go, okay? You say Lumus, it turns on the torch, everybody's happy, it costs us nothing, but Siri has to go and say, It's on now. And then when you've said Knox and it's worked, Siri just cannot stop itself from saying, It's off now. Effect totally ruined. Again. But you just saw me do this. I said Loomis and there was no Siri response. Yeah, there was, actually. You just didn't hear it because I flipped the mute switch on the side of the phone first. Serious, is it worthless? Flip the a mute switch, hold the other one, go Loomis. Well, just look like you're on a wand, Loomis. This morning, dark, so I had to go and have back on something. Instead of swiping and tapping, it said Loomis. And I went off and did the thing and, and, and I'm going to do so again. Okay, so that's 10 or 8 tips for writing on an iPhone. And then, I, as you guessed, by the way, they all do work on an iPad too. I just think they're especially useful on an iPhone because I've never mentioned this at all. It's got a small keyboard. Did that come up? That's it for this edition of 58 Keys. Thank you very much for watching. Now, take care of yourself. Practice that dropping thing. Pronounce Lumos correctly. Take care of yourself. Write more as well. And I will see you soon.